सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस न्यू वीडियो एंड इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड विद दिस मॉड्यूल एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वन काइंड ऑफ थियरम दैट इज सुपर पोजिशन थियरम एंड वी हैव सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स रिलेटेड टू दैट सुपर पोजिशन थियरम टू ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स सो होप विद दिस दो टू प्रॉब्लम्स uh you should be understanding the basics of superposition theorem very carefully okay and uh, those who have not seen that video please uh, go and see that video it is available in our channel please don't skip that concept okay what and all i do please do not skip because i am doing limited i am not completing the complete portion because that much time is also not there for me because i need to cover the other fifth sem student videos as well so how much ever it is possible from my side i am trying to do it to you all i am trying to providing it to you all because i know what kind of difficulties you kind you guys face in this subject because this is a very very critical and very tough subject but if you understand it very well listen to classes it is not that tough okay you should be have, having attentiveness in the class or in the in the video which you are watching anyway if you don't have full concentration there is no use of studying these things because it it won't be going going in your mind so that's why please watch this video till the end if you are uh, listening to this video now don't skip any part of the video if you want to understand the concept don't skip it watch till the end so that you can understand each and everything then you would be commenting that you won't be understanding anything watch till the end guys don't skip any part of the video and like this video if you are interested you can like it and subscribe to our channel and share the playlists of a network analysis which is available available in our channel you, you can share it with your friends okay so we have one more kind of theorem that is thevenin's theorem okay it is pronounced as thevenin's or the spelling is a bit different i n e n but it is pronounced as thevenin's theorem okay thevenin's theorem again we very uh, tricky theorem but very easy if you try to understand it if you understand the theorem very well the problem should be very easy okay so let's uh, start with the statement of this now any combination of linear bilateral uh, circuit elements that is which i already discussed in the superposition theorem that is any uh, resistors and all connected in loops or lumps and active sources regardless of the connection or complexity connected through the given load zl so keep this in mind this statement what i have told load zl this would be coming in the picture in case of thevenin theorem may be replaced by a simple two terminal network consisting of a single voltage source of vth volts okay so whenever we in this case in the circuit we would be having one load impedance and in the when you solve the problems you can name it as a load resistance that load resistance which is connect with that load resistance in which branch it is in which branch it is connected right that branch you only we should be removing and in place of that branch you should be naming one vth voltage okay that voltage is called as thevenin voltage okay and a single impedance that is z equivalent or r equivalent in series with the voltage source across two terminals of the load zl okay so which which zl uh, which have eliminated right this uh, load impedance Uh, along with that load impedance you should be having the vth volt and z equivalent volt in series and that circuit is called as thevenin equivalent circuit that is the final thevenin equivalent circuit would be consisting of one voltage source that is that voltage source is called as thevenin voltage source which is referred as vth and one resistance or an equivalent impedance okay that is the final thevenin circuit we should be concluding from the complex circuit that we are going to discuss when you solve the problems So now keep the statement in mind. Understand this. Next statement is the VTH and the or the thevenin voltage is the open circuit voltage measured at two terminals of interest with load impedance Z del removed. Okay. So what is VTH? I have told you right. In one circuit, we would be having one uh, load resistance or load impedance. Okay, that they would be mentioning as RL specifically. That we should be eliminate. We should be removing that branch. and that branch after removing we should be finding the vth voltage okay that that is called as thevenin voltage after the removal of the load impedance this voltage is called as thevenin equivalent voltage the equivalent impedance zdq of the given network is viewed through the terminals where zl is connected with the zl removed and all the active sources are replaced by their internal impedances okay this equivalent impedance is that impedance when the load impedance rl is removed 
and replaced by their internal impedances that is when all the active sources are replaced okay after that it is removed and that would be seen in the problems if the internal impedances are not known then independent voltage sources are to be replaced by short circuit that is the as the same when the imp impedances are not known voltage sources replaced by short circuit current sources are replaced by open circuit okay that should be keeping in mind which i already discussed in superposition theorem as well okay keep that in mind and this was the complete statement of thevenin's theorem now let's look at the proof whatever we have seen the statement right now we have one proof part in order to uh, understand the steps to solve the problems related to thevenin's theorem okay let's see that so here in this case consider the following network here again we have one uh, complex network with two of the voltage sources but here this is not the what to say superposition theorem we should not be considering one voltage source at a time consider both the voltage sources at a time okay and here we have these two uh, loops here i have named it as i1 i2 okay now what we should be doing is this they have explained in by applying the cramer's rule that is we know the cramer's rule for that what we should be doing is write the in the matrix form that is z1 plus z2 that is consider these two in series and write z1 plus z2 and minus z2 minus z2 z2 plus z3 and uh, like, write like this the equation then apply cramer's rule and solve for i2 okay and this this part you can neglect you can directly start from the calculation of vth okay in order to solve the problem this is not so important from this part is there right the actual problem start that is calculate first thing is we should be calculating the thevenin's equivalent voltage so that is let us consider this as one load impedance right now z3 so in order to calculate the thevenin's equivalent voltage according to the thevenin's theorem we should be eliminating that complete impedance we should be removing that branch and in place of that branch mark this as thevenin's voltage our goal is first we should be writing the equation for this thevenin's voltage vth that is from this point up to this point whatever the sources or the resistances are there from the topmost point up to the uh, downmost point you should be writing all of them as a equation by applying the kvl okay that is that is seeing the outward signs that is here in this case we have so not uh, sorry not from uh, upward to downward opposite okay that is we should be checking from down to up okay sorry down to up and we should be writing the equation vth is equal to e2 and we have plus i into z2 why it is plus i because here if we start from here this is minus but this current i is having opposite direction okay from here we are seeing going upwards and from in this part it is coming downwards so in this way that minus would be minus into minus that is plus so that's why we have got here v e2 plus i z2 whatever the vth equation we got get name it as equation 1 then the same thing for, for rest all the part here here we have one loop here okay solve using kvl apply kvl and we would be getting one equation that we should be converting into the current whatever equation we get keep the current uh, as it is in one side and rest all the components keep it in other, other side okay including all the voltages because our goal here is to find the vth voltage that is this voltage this current voltage so this voltage this voltage source they would be giving you in the circuit along with the resistance but our goal is to find this current right so that's why when we apply the kvl we should be keeping one current in one side and rest all the things in other side name it as equation 2 then substitute this value of current in this equation 1 that is whatever we got here like this we won't be getting this is the proof part whatever current we get while we solve the problems that current substitute uh, 2 in equation 1 whatever equation 1 we have written in that I have substituted the value of this current then substitute it and solve for vth okay so this is the proof part here you can just simply copy it you, you will understand it while solving the problem in brief okay this is the proof part you should be knowing it okay simple max okay so i won't be explaining that also in brief so you can uh, take the screenshot you can pause the video and refer it if you want okay up to vth so like this we got vth next is in order to apply, uh, determine the thevenin circuit we should be having one vth voltage source along with the equivalent impedance right z equivalent in that in order to calculate z equivalent it is very easy in the from the main circuit remove all of the voltage sources and current sources remove all of them that is if we have voltage sources 
you should be making short circuit if you have any current source make it open circuit and you should be keeping only the impedances as it is without changing its position okay that is in this case we have z2 and z3 in parallel sorry z2 and z3 that this load impedance also should be removed okay that also should not be there so you would be left with only z1 and z2 here though that is not they are not in series here we observe here because we have on z3 here load impedance so that's why this is not in series after the removal of this branch because we have removed only this part this two lines are as it is so that's why these two are not in series so that's why i have written it like this here okay so this is the z equivalent part since we know that these two are in parallel take the parallel connection make convert it to a single equivalent impedance and solve for z equivalent like that we would be getting vth and z equivalent then finally write the thevenin circuit with the vth and z equivalent in series and close that loop with the whatever which whatever the load impedance we have removed at the start right that you add it here and close this loop here and name this as the thevenin equivalent circuit okay so this was the uh, whole complete proof part hope this is clear okay so this also is a calculation of i here that is whatever we have got got here i right that we are they have just here calculated and kept it okay as per thevenin theorem use mesh analysis that is for this loop here they have applied mesh analysis for considering the vth voltage and all this is not necessary if you want you can take this proof here this down here if it is necessary for you guys you can pause the video and refer it okay so till here if it is clear it is uh, well and good okay in order to understand see again i am going to summarize just the proof part okay first thing start from in the circuit they would be mentioning one load impedance okay first thing is your calculation of uh, the thevenin voltage that thevenin voltage how to obtain whatever the load impedance is there that branch only we should be removing and uh, in pa in place of that branch add one thevenin voltage that is vth and track for track that thevenin voltage from down to up what in all the components are there up, uh, write it in series and name that as thevenin voltage equation as equation 1 and in that equation whatever the current is there right that you should be finding using the rest of the uh, by simplifying rest of the circuit by using the mesh analysis or not anything the, from that you should be finding our goal is to find the current from that and whatever the current we get here that current you should be substituting back in this equation in order to get the thevenin voltage right like that you would be getting thevenin voltage then calculation of equivalent impedance is simple remove all the voltage sources or current sources along with the impedance branch here uh, uh, load impedance okay then keep all the rest of the resistances or impedances as it is without changing any connection uh, then convert that into one single impedance that is called as equivalent impedance so like that we would be getting vth and z equivalent write them in series and if you want if they mention If they mention you after writing the thevenin equivalent circuit, if they mention you to find the current through that thevenin equivalent circuit, so when when it is mentioned, what you should be doing is write this in series. You can keep it as it is, in, or else if they mention current, then add the final load impedance which are removed at the first. Okay, that you should be adding here and completing this loop and find the current I. Okay, if they ask in the question. Okay, so this was the complete proof part. Hope this is clear. So like this video guys uh, share this video to a huge number in the next video we will we are going to solve for two important problems related to thevenin theorem in order to make you understand it okay so that's all guys thank you